Now you know the how. You know how to generate racket head speed using your trunk and using your shoulders and getting good circular power. You also know the footwork and how to load and explode and you know how to recover very quickly. Now we've got to talk about the wear. You know the ball travels so fast now that if you're slow or if you're out of position on the court, you're just not going to recover fast enough to get to the next ball. The system devised by Paul Wardlaw, who was a coach at Kenyon College and now the coach at the University of Iowa, the system he's developed is the very best I have ever found in shot selection. If your shot selection is good, you will be in position for the next ball. So we've talked about the how, now we're going to talk about the where. Within the next few minutes, you're going to be able to learn the shot selection strategy like the pros use. You're going to be in charge of every point, acting, and your opponent's going to be reacting to you. It's very simple, it's easy to use, and easy to implement in your game. Once you use this, you're going to be in charge of the momentum, and you're going to be winning most of your matches. Now, Shelly, Dave, before we start talking about how to do the Wardlaw directionals, I, I think it's the most important thing in the world to to tell you about the paradigm shift you have to have as players. The classical style from beginning is to learn cross courts and down the lines. I'm going to hit the ball where my opponent isn't or I'm going to go cross court where he is or she is. Now, I want you to wipe that out and make it really easy. With the Wardlaw directionals, all we have to think about is three things. Is it an inside ball? Is it an outside ball? Is it a 90 degree change of direction? Let's, let's show you a minute here, Dave, look. An outside ball just means that it's traveling away from your body. Now Dave, you see this ball? It's coming in this direction like an outside pitch. It's coming away from your body. Now you're limited. If you go down the line and try with the angle of deflection to hit a good shot, you're changing direction of the ball, spin of the ball over the high part of the net into the small part of the court into my inside angle. You're in bad trouble if you don't do that effectively. So the thing when the ball is coming away from you, you have to go back outside angle. So that's an outside angle. And that's basically all you do with a cross court. We know that when we get a cross court, we have to go cross court unless it's a weaker ball. But that's an outside angle now, not a cross court. When the ball comes a little bit, let's say you're over here hitting cross court forehands or outside angle forehands. Let's say the ball comes on this side of your body. Now this is coming into your body which allows you the leverage to pivot and to turn the ball like an inside pitch. We call it turning on the ball. So the ball comes to the inside, you pull it. Use two hands, Dave. Pull it. And you get all kinds of leverage. Now if the ball's outside, you'll go outside and that's the way to play defensive tennis. But if the ball goes on this side of your body, pull it. And you turn on the ball and that's an inside angle ball. That's what we're trying to create, our inside balls. That's how you open up the court and that's how you get control of the point. If you get a short ball on the outside, of course, you go down the line because the angle of deflection is easier, but you have to attack it. That's called a 90 degree change of direction. What determines your ability to do that and whether you should do that is basically how gifted your hands are and how much tennis you've played. That's a hard shot. If you don't do it effectively, you're either going to hit the ball wide or in the net because you're having to change direction or you might feed into my inside angle too, so you better attack when you go down the line. So forget about cross courts, down the lines, let's talk about outside angles, inside angles, and 90 degree change of direction. Now Dave, let's take it the other direction. Let's say you were hitting outside angle backhands. You see the ball again is traveling away from your body. Actually most of the players that play now on their backhand side, they'll just keep the ball back cross court, which is an outside angle. But you also see them when the ball is a little bit on the inside, perfect. They do that. They'll turn on the ball and pull the inside forehand. Now Sampras is great at that, isn't he? But Sampras is probably the best in the world at hitting outside angle balls, outside angle balls, outside angle balls, and then he'll either do that or outside angle balls, and then he'll bait his opponent to go down the line and then he's on the run and he pulls an inside ball. And that's all that's happening. He's thinking, he's probably thinking cross courts and things like this, but actually what he's doing is he's going outside angle, outside angle, then pulling the inside. So again, Dave, watch this. Shelly, do you see how that works? We go outside angle, outside angle. Now if he gets the ball on this side, he can turn on it. Look at him load. I love his footwork there. Look at him load on his right leg. 
You see how that makes it so nice for him to turn his hips into the ball? There goes outside angle, outside angle, out. There's an inside, and he'll pull that ball. And if he gets a short one, he's going to go 90 degree direction down the line. And when your pros are playing, they, the players who win, do this. Whether or not they know they're doing the Wardlaw directionals, I don't know. But usually, winning players follow these habits to the T. And if you'll remember that, it makes it so much easier to play. You don't have to think. You just go out and think and do outside angles, inside angles, or 90 degree change of direction.